Welcome, Maria. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's lovely to have you. And do you want to start just by introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about about you? Yeah, thank you, Emma. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here with you for today's speaker series. Um, so my name is Maria. I was born in the U.S. in the Bay Area, but spent most of my childhood in El Salvador. Both of my, of my parents are from there. Um, and then we started traveling a bit more uh, for my dad's work. Um, that's why I finished high school in New York and then went straight out to Europe um, to pursue my undergrad. I found a very cool program. Got to move cities every year. I was in London for a year, in Madrid for a year, and then finally in Berlin. Um, so I will say that cultural and just being in different places has always been a big part of who I am. Um, outside of work, I like to play tennis. I meditate. I do yoga. I love going on walks, and I love the sun. So every time the sun's shining, I love it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's a bit of myself. <laughs> Super, yeah. I like the sun too, but being based in Scotland, I think there's maybe a bit less of it here <laughs> on the side yeah. of the world. And it's like really yeah. excited. And so do you still like to travel? Do you do a lot of traveling still? Um, yes, I try to. Um, I'm really happy that it's starting to be a possibility again after so long where we were just based in the same place. Um, but yeah, I love traveling. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah. It's much nicer now, but easier to travel again. So hopefully it yeah. stays that way. Um, so here we're yeah. chatting about work and your projects and you're working on some, some really cool stuff. So would you mind telling us a little bit more about your work and, and what you're currently working on? Yeah. Um, so the project I'm currently working on is called STEM in a Box. Um, it's a tiny shoe box where we put electric waste, technological materials, and step-by-step -step assembly guides to teach at-risk youth, mainly girls, how to assemble robots. Our main goal with that is to show them the practical application of math um, and hopefully inspire them to pursue a university degree in that field. Um, we have been working on this since 2019. We're currently operating in Nigeria and El Salvador mainly, but have started the procedure deployments for other countries. So this year will be in seven countries around the world, which makes us very happy. Um, but yeah, just a little bit on STEM in a box and what we do. Yeah, such an interesting project, such a great idea. And Thank how you. did you first sort of come across this idea? Is it a problem that's been something that's passionate, that you're passionate about? Or how did you first sort of design this idea? Yeah, so it has been a really long process in a way. Um, I, will, I will always like to start by sharing the story behind it and the real inspiration. Um, my paternal grandmother is the mother of seven children growing. She loved plants, herbs, and experimented with their natural health benefits. And even today, uh, 90 years after, she has a outstanding long-term memory. Uh, unfortunately, when the time to enroll her in school came, her parents decided she must stay home to look after her siblings. And that's why she never made it to school and never learned how to read or write. And this is su such a special reality about her that I didn't find out till I was 17, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I realized that my reality was very different to children's reality in El Salvador. And I started having conversations with her, with my father, trying to understand what it was that they did differently when raising me. And soon enough, we realized that it was education, that the only reason why I had a better life or better living condition than some of my cousins was 
because my dad understood very early on that the only way out of the village will be through education. Um, he became a pilot and a diplomat <laughs> very proudly. And that's, that's also, again, when I understood that connection and that I wanted to create an impact in the education space. The idea didn't come to life um, from one day to the other after having that realization. Uh, I will say it took about a year um, till we visited the Fiat Chrysler HQ in, in Italy. And they have a very similar thing where they take one of the assembly line robots to teach children from kindergarten throughout university about math, art, music, and in our case, it was logistics exercises. Um, so yeah, I'm a business major. I, I was majoring in finance and that's when I saw that connection of what you could do with robotics. For a while, we, we tried to bring one of the robots to El Salvador, but the budget was so high that I got disappointed very quickly because I knew what that amount of money could do at home, just in terms of infrastructure at schools. Um, until one day I was having lunch with my two best friends and one of them just stopped me and she was like, why don't you create your own robots? <laughs> and yeah, a couple of years after we have three do-it-yourself robots um, thanks to that conversation. Wow. Yeah, it's a really interesting journey into it and, and from finance as well. So is this always something that you've wanted to do, being in the so sort of social impact space? Or do you feel like it's been a pivot in your career when you sort of had this, this initial idea? So I wouldn't say it's something I always wanted to do. However, I always, always had a connection with the space. Um, my maternal grandmother found a university in El Salvador 40 years ago when we were just transitioning from the civil war period and my mother has worked there for about 30 years as well so for a really long time I thought that my mom took the easy road um, because sometimes working under your parents People might assume it's easy. It's not. They're the, the toughest boss you'll ever have. <laughs> um, but I saw it that way, that she stayed so long in a place where she wasn't exploiting her p potential and was just being complacent. So for a really long time, I didn't admit it to myself that education or the social impact space wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, when I was working in finance, I think I was trying to prove Thanks to myself, to my parents, um, to my friend. But after the pandemic, I decided to join their team at the university and their financial analysis department. And very quickly, I realized that's not what I wanted to do. I transitioned to the digital transformation team and started working on their processes and automating them. And that's when I fell in love with the institution and um, the mission it stands for. And it wasn't only till this January where I took the courage to quit and focus on them in a box entirely. So I will say that that question has also been a, a journey where I had to be patient and very compassionate towards myself. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, especially the, the compassionate side as well. I think it can be really easy to get stuck in trying to make decisions and thinking if you're making the right decisions and, and where to go. Um, and I, yeah, I think it, it does take that time. Um, so what does a typical day look like for you? I think it's it's quite early where you are. Is that right? So are your <laughs> days normally early starts? <laughs> yes. So I usually start my day early. I'm more of a morning person. Um, and on a perfect day, I get to meditate before I get out of bed or rather out of room. Um, I usually have some meetings in the morning because 
almost half of my team is based in Africa, so it's easier to do the meetings in the morning. Um, after that, I go to class. I'm currently doing a semester accelerator pro in Boulder. Um, so I go to class for a few hours, then do some more meetings. And then in the afternoon is my time to do my work and fulfill my, my responsibilities um, in the pro project. Sometimes I do a lot of design work. Um, creating the assembly guide. Um, I fell in love with doing the graphic design of that part as well. Um, and I would say that lately, most of my responsibilities are funding. And um, once we ensure we have the funds, there's a lot of logistics involved for us to deliver the tools. So those are the two hardest parts of our intervention, securing funding and then making sure we meet that promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then after, after work, um, sometimes I play tennis, go on a hike, and then just have, have some dinner, read a book, go to bed, and that's it on a weekly day. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it sounds like a really nice balance as well for time to yourself and times to have some meditation alongside the, the main sort of project and, and work that you do. Definitely the balance is very important, but that again is a process that has taken a lot of patience and a lot of discipline. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a try to be about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always trying. <laughs> trying to aim to get a little bit better each day, I think. So do you have any tips or advice for someone who is looking to either enter the social impact sector or maybe has an idea that they're looking to take forward? Any Anything that you would have given advice to yourself, say, a, a few years ago when you were starting out? Yeah, so I will say it is finding community. And the way you can do that is through the multiple international organizations that support youth-led initiatives. Um, I think I'm going to focus on the community aspect of it. The work we do gets very lonely. Um, you can be working very hard for a project for a couple of months, and you're not going to see where your hard work went to to till two months after. Sometimes that moment happens once a month. Sometimes, if you're lucky, every two weeks. So it's a really long process where you don't always see results in the in the short run. And that is where your community comes in. You need people that are your your age that have similar um passions and missions to be around you and to help you through the hard days when you need it. Um, when I started working, for example, that sense of community was Global Change Makers. It's a Swiss-based organization. Um, they have mentorship programs. They have a change maker school where you can take project management courses or design thinking courses. And what was really cool for me was that that they really walked me through each step of design thinking from empathy to ideation. And I had a mentor along the way that could help me through that. Um, and I think another thing that's very special about Global Change Makers is that after you take one of their courses, you get the opportunity to apply for seed funding and pilot as your initiative. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice. Look for community and look for the programs that walk you through that step-by-step -step process of design thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, and we can share the links to, to Global Changemakers and some of yeah. the other communities. So anyone listening can can find them and, and gain what, what you've gained from that. I think definitely having a mentor. And someone just to chat the idea through with and, and stage it all sounds sounds really helpful. Um, so yeah. the final question um, for you today is around working in sustainability in general. 
and a lot of the people I talk to and I would say personally as well can find it difficult to separate yourself from your work and and as we've sort of talked about before have that time for your own activities and for yourself so do you find that your work is a big part of who you are and do you have ways in which you separate yourself from it I suppose part of it is your meditation and, and your hiking and, and tennis as well any any thoughts on that yeah so of course that separation is important for our own health and um well-being and you get a lot of advice on trying to separate the two but as weeks have passed since our first conversation i have seen how it's not necessary to separate it um i had a lot of conflict with it as well because i thought that people put me in two boxes either the maria that's fun um <laughs> that works in finance that likes to party or the maria that is an activist and is very respected for for her social impact work and for a really long time, I was like, okay, maybe I can merge the two, or I just embrace them either or. But as time has, has passed, I, I've understood that without either or, I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, so I tried to embrace the two. Um, I also had a very insightful conversation with my partner the other day where he was I was a little insecure about how sometimes people just saw what I had to offer professionally um and then he said something like yes you have of course you have more than more to offer than who you are professionally but your work is a combination of your values of what you love of what you spend for so in a way, what I'm trying to say is that all those things that make me me translate to my project and I wouldn't be as passionate or as committed to it without those values and that love for my community or, or for education itself. Um, so long story short, I do find it hard to separate the two. But what I've seen lately is that there's even there's more more to gain when you embrace them and try to bring them together. Yeah, huh. that's a really nice answer. Yeah, <laughs> can definitely take some of that from that for myself. Thank you for that. Um, and I suppose a final final question is around STEM <laughs> box and where do you where would you like to see the project going in the future? Maybe in three year or five years time. Yeah, that's a very good question. So right now my brain is in a lot of places because after the pilot test that we just ran, it came evident that it will be a bit hard to scale the tools as we have it now. There's a lot of manual labor involved, um, and especially the way we power them. It's not the most sustainable one. Um, so I will say that in a year time, I'm going to focus on developing that prototype and transitioning from an MVP to a go-to-market product. Um, but speaking of a long-term vision, I would love to work with bigger international organizations like UNICEF or UNHCR and have them overtake the implementation of this. And the government as well, I think, will play a very big role in um, ensuring that something like this is present in public and private. So I would say that my biggest dream in that period of time will be building those partnerships with governments and international organizations to scale this project. Yeah, great. Yeah. No, that sounds that sounds super. And the best of luck. I think it's such an interesting project. And um, it was really great to chat yeah, to yeah. you and learn a bit more about you and your project today. So thank you so much for coming and, and chatting with me. Yes, my absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to see the final result of this project of yours. So yeah. best of luck as well. 